Hey guys, so in this video I want to talk about two-dimensional forces in the horizontal plane. And what that means is that we're going to have a flat surface, kind of like the floor, and all the forces are going to have to be along the flat surface. So it could be this way, or this way, or this way. Now because we have two-dimensional forces, they could also be at an angle. So instead of this way and this way, it could be sort of somewhere in between, as long as they're all along the floor. Right? Let me show you an example real quick. And it's something like this if this is a um, your top view. So looking down, this is what you see, but all these forces are flat against the ground. Before we jump into this, let me give you a few uh, reminders about forces. So forces are vectors, and since they're vectors, whenever we have a force at an angle, whether it be like this or at an angle sort of like this, a horizontal force, we have to first decompose that force into its X and Y components. That's the first thing. Second thing I will remind you of is that, again, since forces are vectors, the net force, uh, that means the one force that could replace all the other forces you have, is calculated by a process called vector addition, which we've covered. So the net force right here is just the sum of all forces. And this process is vector addition, okay? And then one additional point here is that if you're pulling parallel to a horizontal surface, which is what we're doing here, right? So let me put a little block um, M here on a surface. Pulling parallel to the surface means you're pulling something like this. Or it could also be a force this way as well, okay? So if you're pulling parallel, then the sum of all forces in the y-axis has to be zero, right? Um, because we're going to assume that this block isn't going to, by itself, break through the floor or just start flying up, right? So if you're not pulling in the y-axis at all, if all your forces are flat in the x, there's no force going like this, or no force going like this, then it's guaranteed that the sum of all forces in the y-axis is zero. And in this case, because the only two forces you would have is mg and normal going up, it must also be that these two forces have to be exactly the same magnitude so that they cancel each other, okay? So if the only two forces are these two on the y-axis, and they have to be the same. And that's what's going to happen here. So basically, we're going to ignore those two, two forces for these kinds of questions, because the only thing that's going on in the y-axis here is that normal equals mg, at that, and that doesn't really play into this question. All right? So let's see. Here I have a mass of 1,500 kilograms on a frictionless horizontal surface. Three forces pull on it as shown, top view, and then I tell you what the forces are and what all the angles are. I'm going to put these numbers in here. I just want to point out that I made a small mistake here. This is supposed to be um, actually counter clockwise, CCW. So counterclockwise goes um, like this, okay? So once we get to F3, I'll show you what that looks like. So F1 is 300, um, 37 above the positive X. Positive X is here, 37 above looks like this. So I'm going to put a 37 over here. Try to make this as small as possible so we can fit all the arrows. There's going to be a bunch of them. Um, F2 is 400 newtons. And it is at 53 below the negative X. So negative X is over here. All right, so it's 53 below that, so it looks like this. And F3 is 500. Um, counterclockwise, 37 counterclockwise from the negative Y. Negative Y is over here. And counterclockwise, clockwise would be this way, counterclockwise is that way. So counterclockwise would, be, would look like this. So this is our 37 right here. Okay, so these are magnitudes and directions for all of these vectors. All right, so before I start, remember I want all my angles to be against the x-axis, ideally, right? Because then I can decompose just remembering that fx is f cosine of theta and fy is f sine of theta. But that only works if the angle is against the x-axis. So this angle is against the x-axis, that's good. The angles that this one is against the x-axis as well and this one is not this one is against the vertical against the y-axis so what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead grab this angle from here and that's the one that I'm going to use so if this is a 37 this has to be a 53 okay 
and I'm going to gently scratch this out so I don't use it okay now what we're looking for we're looking for the net force and the net force as I told you is the sum of all forces so in this case is going to be just F1 plus F2 plus F3 but because these forces are at angles at different angles I can't simply add up all these numbers I have to first I have to actually combine their components so what I want you to remember what I want you to remember is that every vector at an angle is made up of its two components so the magnitude of F net that's what it looks like magnitude of the vector F net is given by the square root of F net X and plus um, F net Y they're squared so they're basically the Pythagorean of these two the angle is also going to depend on those two variables it's the arc tangent of F net Y over F net X so long story short what you need actually is to find these two numbers and then you'll be able to get this as well as the angle alright so that's gonna be our goal to find these two numbers so if F net is F1 plus F2 plus F3 then it must be that F net X is F1 X F2 X plus F3 X right or what we do is we repeat this equation and just put X's everywhere and the same thing happens for the Y axis as well so I'm gonna write here F net Y equals F1 Y plus F2 Y plus F3 Y and all I have to do is find these six values and then plug it in and then it will be done so let's do that to do that we have to decompose F1 F2 and F3 into X and Y so um, here is F1 I'm gonna draw these with a thick green line um, here's F1 X F1 Y then here is F2 X F2 Y and here I have F3 X and F3 Y alright so let me decompose those um, all the angles are already with the x-axis so f1x will simply be f1 cosine of theta right so it's 300 cosine of its theta which is 37 and then f2x and f3x I'm gonna find them here as well f2x is f2 is over here 400 cosine of 53 and f3x is 500 cosine of 53 now notice that I'm using 53 37 not negative 53 or negative 37 and that's because I'm just gonna plug in the absolute angle here um, or not the absolute angle the the relative angle I'm just gonna make it positive because I'm going to um, check for signs at the very end right so once I get a number I'll leave a little space here to put whether it's positive or negative which I can do by simply looking at the diagram so 300 cosine of 37 gives me 240 Newtons um, f2x gives me 240 Newtons as well and then this one gives me 300 Newtons and then lastly let's check the signs don't forget to do that um, f1x is going to the right so it's positive f2x is going to the left so it's negative and f3x is going to the right so it is positive okay now if I were to add these over here I would get positive 240 negative 240 and positive 300 so the final answer is positive 300 newtons um, not the final answer but f net x All right so let's do f net y I'll try to squeeze some space over here um, f1 y is just f1 which is 300 sine of 37 and I can just kind of look at the numbers here and just copy that except that it's going to be sines instead so 400 sine of 53 and f3y is 500 sine of 53 okay and I have these numbers here this is 180 
this is um, 320 and this is 400 now let's look at the signs F1Y is positive and the other two guys are negative so positive negative negative okay when I combine all this stuff in here I have 180 positive 320 negative 400 negative and if I combine everything I have negative 540 newtons okay I can now combine these two now that I have these two numbers here these are sort of the preliminary answers here um, I can find F net because F net is simply the magnet the square root um, I'm sorry the Pythagorean of the two legs so 300 squared plus negative 4 540 squared and if you do this and you round it to three significant figures this is a 540 over here you get 618 newtons I can do um, I can get the angle as well theta for my net force the angle of my net force um, is the arc tangent of y over x so negative 540 over 300 okay negative 540 over 300 if you do this the angle is the answer is negative 61 degrees now remember with the arc tangent you have to make sure it's in the right place and the way we can do that is by drawing so if the f net is 300 on the x and 540 in the y it looks like this um, f net x is 300 and then I'm going to draw this one a little longer um, f net y is 540 I didn't put a negative because it's already pointing down and that means that my net force actually looks like this and the angle is going to be against the x-axis over here 61 degrees I don't have to put a negative because I'm showing the, the exact position of that angle and this is the fourth quadrant and the arc tangent function works just as well in the fourth quadrant and it doesn't require any touch-ups so we'll leave it alone all right all of this was part A only but part B is pretty easy part B we're just asking for the acceleration I want to know the acceleration and I want to know what is the direction of the acceleration so I'm going to call this theta of acceleration theta A how do I find acceleration of force problem F equals MA so sum of all forces equals MA sum of all forces is the same thing as net force which in this case is um, 618 so I find A equals 618 divided by the total mass which is 1500 and if you do this you get 0 0.412 meters per second squared that's the answer final answer for acceleration by the way let me highlight the other final answers over here now what about the direction well F equals in May F equals MA, you have these two vectors here, and you should remember that in F equals MA, the direction of A is the same as the direction of the net force. Okay? Because if my net force is this way, then I accelerate this way. So the angle for A, this is the magnitude of A, so I can do this. The angle for A is simply the same one, negative 61 degrees. Okay, fourth quadrant. All right, and that's it for this one. All right, so here I have three friends pull horizontally on ropes that are connected to the same box. Let's draw a little box here. Um, and the box sits at rest on a frictionless horizontal surface. It's a very similar setup to before. It's just we're going to ask for something different here. So the box is initially at rest. And guy A is going to pull with 30 towards the negative x-axis. So it looks like this. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to call this A equals 30. Uh, guy B pulls with 40 towards the negative Y axis. So B looks like this. I'll make that a little longer. Notice I didn't put negatives because the arrows indicate the direction. And the question is, what must be the magnitude and direction of the force exerted by, by guy C so that the box doesn't move? So the box starts at equilibrium, um, starts with uh, at rest at an initial velocity of zero and I want it to not move in other words I want the velocity not to change so I want the acceleration to be zero which is equilibrium which means that all the forces have to cancel so you have to be able to piece all that together basically I want 
all the forces to cancel. So I want to know what is the magnitude of C and what is the angle of C so that the forces cancel. And if I want the forces to cancel, it means that I want the sum of all forces to be um, zero. So the sum of all forces, which is A plus B plus C, I want that to be zero. So I want these three guys to add up to zero. All right. Now, this problem is simple enough that you can kind of, uh, you might just have seen that you can eyeball this and realize that, well, I just need C to first of all be somewhat in this direction so that it cancels both. And all you really need is for your C x to cancel out the 30 and for your cy to cancel out the 40 and then now that you know cx and cy you can calculate c and the magnitude of c okay so this question is simple enough that you could have just done that um, but in the more general terms if you had a problem that was a little bit though similar to this but a little bit more complicated what you would do is if the sum of all forces equals zero then because you have two dimensional forces, you would do this in the x-axis and the y-axis. So you would set it up that ax plus bx plus cx equals zero. And this is your equation on the x-axis. And you would set it up that the same would happen in the y-axis. So ay, by plus cy equals zero. And by doing, by doing this, you're gonna be able to find cx and cy which remember um, every vector is composed of its is made up of its legs so to find the magnitude of c I need cx and cy and to find the angle of c I need cx and cy and the way you would do it the long way if you will uh, that's gonna work for any question is any problem is this way so let's check this out ax is a in the x-axis which is 30 30 to the left here we don't have to decompose because they're sitting flat on the x and flat on the y. Bx, b is flat on the y-axis, so bx is zero, right? If it's going straight down, there's no x component either way. Um, and then cx is what I'm looking for. So look what I get. I get that cx equals 30, which is what we could have quickly done by just looking at the problem. Um, on the y-axis, a y, a is flat on the x-axis, so it doesn't have a y component at all. It's just flat this way. So it's zero. By is 40, but it's going down, so it's negative 40. Plus CY, CY is what I'm looking for. And look what I get here, I get that CY equals 40, okay? So again, if you had something a little bit more elaborate, a more complicated problem, um, maybe you wouldn't be able to right away see how all the forces combine, all right? Um, and now I can just plug in these numbers here. So a 30 with a 40 gives me a 50. So the magnitude of 50 uh, of C is 50 newtons. And the angle of C is the arc tangent of y over x. So it's the arc tangent of 40 over 30. And that is 53 degrees. Okay? So you'd want C to be um, 50 at 53. So it would look something like this. C equals 50 at an angle of... 53 degrees and that's the final answer all right so hopefully this makes sense let me know if you guys have any questions